Let's begin with more school bus uh, cancellations for you. Let's, uh, we remind you, of course, of Dufferin County because of flooding there. All uh, for Simcoe County, uh, buses have been canceled. We have now not just uh, flooding happening in Simcoe County, we now have freezing rain warnings that have been issued for several parts of Simcoe County as well. So those freezing rain warnings starting to move further and further south uh, right now. Frank has the very latest on these and the rainfall warnings as well, Frank. Yeah, Kev, uh, this morning we are already seeing that rain push its way back into the city of Toronto. This is another additional round. As you mentioned about those school bus cancellations, we're watching a big change up for today. That change up comes in the uh, form of temperature. Well, temperature this morning at midnight was right around 14 degrees. We're already hovering at around 10, but if you take a look up through the Wyarton area and some of the higher elevations this morning, that temperature has already started to fall through Owen Sound as the final frame's right here, pushing its way down almost into Orangeville. So this is the reason why some freezing rain warnings have been posted. And right at that key time when kids could be getting on school buses through Simcoe County is when we have the potential of some freezing rain. Right now here in the city of Toronto, we're back into the wet weather. That's going to last up until the noon hour, but I need people to pay attention because as we get into mid-morning, early afternoon, we could even see a little change up on the roadways anywhere north of about the 401 in the form of some icing and or some freezing rain. Temperatures minus 2 into Sudbury. We're still 10 degrees here in Toronto, 7 into Windsor. That temperature of 10 will fall to about plus 1 later this afternoon and then down to about minus 3 as we work away tonight. Tomorrow, plus one will be your temperature with a risk of flurries. On your Friday, we're going to see some evening showers. Going to continue to be mild through Saturday and another round, round of rain that is on Sunday, about five to ten millimeters, and we'll have a daytime high of seven. Six degrees with some sunshine for Monday, and then on Tuesday, sunshine through the morning. Afternoon, some cloud cover returns with flurries. So, carry this morning, people need to pay attention. Right now, it's wet on the roadways to the north of us, potentially icy in the next hour. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you really got to pay attention, too, if you're traveling around North York this morning, uh, ongoing problems. There's a power outage, and this is in the area bounded by Lawrence up to the 401 and from the DVP over to Victoria Park. So a lot of traffic lights are out in that area. And we all know that uh, people get a little anxious when they get to the, uh, the four-way stops. You really have to treat them as a four-way stop. And if you don't know what the rules are, pick up an MTO book. All right, as well, southbound on the 400. As you're approaching Highway 9, there's a stalled vehicle. It's on the shoulder, but uh, that is adding to the delays. So southbound 400, just check the drive times right now from Highway 88 down to Highway 89, or down to Highway 9, rather. Looking at about 20 minutes to get through that stretch. So uh, do yourself a favor and use southbound Highway 27 instead to get around that uh, delay right now. That's Look Your Drive. I'll send it downstairs to you, Mel. And the weather, our top story this morning. A live look right now at the very fast-moving Humber River. Yesterday, we got 7.6 millimeters of rain. That's not a lot, but of course, the ground still frozen. The water not being absorbed. The result is flooding. So with all the uh, current warm temperatures, we could see more of this. Just another reminder to steer clear of the waterways. Now, rushing water in Cambridge, we're also watching this morning. Have a look at this. People in the area reporting issues with the water supply. Some bridges and streets are closed. Uh, just about an hour ago, an ice jam in the area just clearing up, and you can almost see almost like freezing rain coming down here, and uh, the temperatures are starting to drop through the area. Now, Frank mentioned that warm weather is melting all of that snow and ice. Of course, it has to go somewhere. Officials say that a creek blocked by debris is to blame for flooding in Mississauga. So this is something we are also watching. Just have a look at this mess that we're seeing here with Meadowvale residents. They are cleaning up after this. This is uh, Old Dairy Road in Credit View area. The Credit Valley Conservation has upgraded an earlier flood outlook to a flood warning for Mississauga. A flood outlook still issued for the Toronto Region and Conservation Authority. It was issued on Sunday. It's still in effect for Toronto as well as areas of Brampton. Now, something we're also watching right now, Carrie mentioned it in her traffic because traffic lights could be out in a major area in North York. Have a look at this. This is the power outage map. We just got off the phone with Toronto Hydro. They tell us about 2,800 customers are affected by this outage. The area bounded by the 401 south to Lawrence from the DVP east to Victoria Park. Crews right now working to identify the problem. There is word it may have been a transformation fire that's not been confirmed. We do not know when it will be all restored, but we know that crews are in the area. So again, as Carrie mentioned there, if you are driving through the area, especially in these wet conditions, treat all of these lights as a four-way stop. Uh, we'll let you know as soon as we get more information on this outage here. 
Now, we're also watching some school bus cancellations here as well. Dufferin County, uh, all because of flooding. And in Simcoe County, all vehicles canceled, but schools remain open. To other news that we're following at this hour, new allegations being directed against Patrick Brown, this time from Tory MPP Randy Hillier, and they were made outside of chambers at the legislature, so Hillier is not protected from any lawsuits. Patrick Brown has been engaged in dirty and crooked politics for too long in this province, and people have now found sub substantial, significant evidence of his wrongdoing, and we're bringing it to the proper, proper agencies to have it fully investigated and that due process is completed. The Hillier says that he has evidence that warrants a significant investigation by Ontario's ethics watchdog. They include travel to India and income disclosure. Brown dismissing the allegations in a statement. He says these accusations are noise and nonsense intended to distract us from the goal of moving forward together. This small group of insiders will stop at nothing in their attempt to derail us. Hillier himself is facing allegations of harassment and bullying from another PC candidate. Meanwhile, Patrick Brown was vetted by the PC party last night. We're going to be finding out today if he will be allowed to run for the party leadership. Well, another golden moment for Canada at the Winter Olympics, but not all the news was great for our men and women. Sportsnet's Arash Madani with more on Day 12 in South Korea. Well, good morning from Pyeongchang, where while you were likely sleeping, Brady Lehman became the ninth gold medalist for Canada here at these Winter Olympics. In men's ski cross, an event he was the world number 13 coming into this competition. But then it was Lehman getting into the final four and ultimately delivering, becoming the first Canadian in men's ski cross to ever capture a medal. Not the case in women's curling. History made for all the wrong reasons. Rachel Homan's rank will not reach the podium here in Pyeongchang. Afterwards, she said it was disappointing, and so was her performance. She curled at a 77% clip, 72% on draws. And now comes the conversation of whether or not the Olympic trials are the right format to get a Canadian into the Olympics. Stay tuned on that one. The men, meanwhile, will face the Americans in the semifinal. That's not the only Canada-USA showdown coming up. Women's hockey for gold. Again, the two countries. And it was Brianne Jenner who said, this is one of the best rivalries in sport. What else is there to say? Well, the women's hockey players will let their play do the talking again. For BT, I'm Arash Madani in Pyeongchang. Well, superstar George Clooney and his wife, uh, human rights lawyer Amal Clooney, vowing to stand by the survivors of last week's mass shooting in Florida. The power couple announcing that they are making a $500,000 donation to the upcoming March for Our Lives event in the name of their eight-month-old twins, Ella and Alexander. They will also be marching with the Stoneman Douglas High School students attending the rally on March 24th in Washington, D.C., Oprah Winfrey as well as Steven Spielberg also making donations. Students have been lobbying all levels of government for changes to gun control laws after 17 people were killed on Valentine's Day when a gunman opened fire on the school.